All right. Good morning. morning. I'm Pastor Don, and we are glad that you're here this morning. And let me be the first to say happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, man. I can't believe that it's this Thursday. Already? Just, I mean, it just seems like it snuck up on me. Uh, If you're a guest in the pew rack, there's cards there, and if you will fill one of those out, or regular attender member, fill that card out and drop it in the offering boxes at the back of the church. Uh, That will allow me to pray for you, and I pray every week over those cards, so please do that. Uh, Brother Phil, do we have any announcements that we need to make before we open? Do have one. Uh, Our angel tree has been restocked. Uh, We uh, we took, uh, I I took over, on Wednesday night, we filled bags with rice and beans to be a part of that. I took those over and we picked up 10 more angel tree names. If you pick up one of those, and we strongly encourage you to do that, uh, pick it and and get that and fill the the wish list as well as the uh, the need list on that. They need to be here in a black plastic trash bag by next Sunday, or if you need to take a little more time you can take it over to the Methodist Church on Monday morning. Uh, but that, those need to be there so they can be taken out. It is a great ministry and uh, to be able to touch lives in that way. So I encourage you to be a part of that angel tree. All right. Uh, and I've Make got... sure if you do that you sign out. There's a list there so you can say which one that you took so we can make sure and have record. That's right. They want to call and remind you if you didn't turn it in, I think is what they're thinking. So uh, I've asked... Uh, Brother Paul, uh, one of our deacons, to open us in prayer. So would you stand uh, with him as we open in prayer? Lord, we thank you for the day that's beautiful. It's a little cool, but we appreciate the Lord. The sun is shining, and you're shining your life on us. Lord, we ask that you bless our congregation that's here today and be with the ones that are not here, Lord. But whatever the reason is, just bless them. Now, Lord, we'd like to thank the, our church leaders, our workers, all the way up from our pastor down to the people that keep this beautiful sanctuary clean. Lord, we ask you to continue your blessings and give us good health. Give us and thank you for the day. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. Be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is a time where we just humble ourselves before the Lord. I want to invite you to join me in bowing your head. If you have room in your pew, uh, certainly in kneeling as well. Heavenly Father, we, we do praise you. We do thank you, Lord, for hearing us when we pray. We praise you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Lord, we, we praise you for... God, the blessings you give us, but Lord, we praise you even more and thank you even more for the relationship that we have with you. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can come to you. Thank you that through Christ Jesus, Lord, that you are our heavenly Father. And we thank you and we praise you for that. Blessed be you, Lord. Lord, whether it's raining or whether it's sunny, Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Thanksgiving is Thursday, and I know Lynn's turning the lights up really bright so I can see, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, And we are going to be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving, Um, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about being thankful this morning, if you will. Uh, Look in your Bible over in Luke's Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Luke chapter 17. There is a Bible in the pew there for you, uh, if you don't have one with you. Uh, Luke chapter 17. And as you're turning there, um, of course, we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, the traditional Thanksgiving, which we 
uh, believe that the pilgrims celebrated. Uh, the, the traditional meal, though, that the pilgrims celebrated may be a little bit different um, than what we typically... They probably did have turkey, uh, but they also had some other things uh, there that the Indians ate. Um, they, they had uh, most likely lobster, um, and the side dishes were probably like lobster and eel, which is a family favorite at our Thanksgiving. I don't know about you guys. Uh, they didn't have potatoes because potatoes weren't uh, planted in America yet, uh, at least in North America. And so, uh, and there was no cranberry sauce because that hadn't come to America yet either. And so I'm not heartbroken about cranberry sauce, but what's Thanksgiving without potatoes? Uh, and those little crescent rolls, they didn't have those either. And so... Uh, you know, Benjamin Franklin uh, wanted the turkey to be our national bird, the wild turkey, uh, which means at Thanksgiving we'd probably be eating eagle, and I don't think that would be near as tasty as a turkey, so I'm glad they didn't listen to him. But he did try, and this is true, he did try to perfect a cooking method using electricity. Electricity to cook. He thought it would make the turkey very tender. Uh, and his, the results of his experiment, here's what he wrote he said, he said uh, believing it would become uncommonly tender, he, uh, he documented how he was doing the electricity. Uh, you know, we, we think of him with a kite. I never think of him with a kite and a, a key and a turkey at the bottom, but uh, evidently at some point he did that. And, and, uh, but in fact, he shocked himself instead of the turkey. Uh, and and it's, he, he wrote in his journal, he said, a universal blow through my whole body from head to foot. So he gave up on electric fried turkey, um, which probably was just as well. So uh, as we think of Thanksgiving, we think of turkey and all those things, but I want to just think about thanks. Um, there's, there's no holiday in Scripture that we're called to really celebrate uh, more than Thanksgiving. If you think about it, the, the Bible never tells us to celebrate Easter because Sunday was the Lord's Day. And we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus on Sunday every day. Every Sunday should be a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Amen. The early Christians didn't celebrate Christmas either. They didn't celebrate when Jesus was born and, and was born of the Virgin Mary. And uh, we, it, they didn't have uh, the, the uh, I don't know where our little wooden, oh my goodness, did, did they not put it up this year? Oh, it's, these are Thanksgiving. Never mind. I'm already thinking of Christmas. And so... Uh, but they didn't, they didn't celebrate. But they always, the, the Jews did have a feast of Thanksgiving. Um, and they were remembering how God had delivered them from Egypt, from Pharaoh, and brought them out and brought them to the promised land. So there's probably nothing more biblical that you will do this Thanksgiving than saying a prayer at the meal and thanking God for all the blessings that he's given you. I want you to, to think about that. Even more than Christmas, even more uh, than Easter, at least traditionally. Now, of course, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus as paramount. Uh, but what I'm saying is from a biblical example, Thanksgiving or a Thanksgiving celebration is probably the most biblical thing we see. Um, and look in Luke 17. Would you look at verse 11? Uh, beginning in verse 11, um, it says, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And Jesus had traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him, and they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Father, I thank you for your word, and I ask God that we could, um, Lord, understand it and apply it. Help us, Lord, to leave this place thinking about what you have spoken to us this morning. Lord, I ask that it would be clear uh, and that it would also be pointed to our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So you've got these uh, folks who are about as lost as you can get. Uh, their uh, leprosy, leprosy was a terrible disease in the day of Jesus because it, it was contagious um, lepers were not allowed to come into the community. In fact, you couldn't even see your own family. You would have to be out in, um, uh, in a leper colony or a place that was uh, away from the regular community. You couldn't worship 
uh, in the synagogue. You couldn't go to the temple to make sacrifices. You were, in essence, cut off from the community and from God because of this disease. So you have 10 men here who are calling out, uh, and Jesus is going through, and it says, uh, as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They're, they're outside the village. They're not going to be allowed in the village, and that's why they're calling out. And they're, they're from a distance, so they, they understand, Jesus, Master, have pity. And when he saw them, verse 14, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. So they're calling out, Jesus, have mercy on us. And they're, they're outside the community, outside the, 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 uh, the society, outside even they feel like the, the presence of God. Do you ever feel like you're so far away from God that he can't hear your prayers? Well, that's how they felt. Now, there are nine of them that are Jews, but remember, he's on the, on the border, it says, between Samaria and the uh, Galilee, and so the, the Jews from Galilee, but there's a Samaritan among them. Here's the thing about being lost. When you're lost and separated from God, he doesn't care your nationality. He doesn't care your religious background. He doesn't care who your parents are. He doesn't care how successful you are in this world. What, what matters is your relationship to him. See, lostness is what they all have in common. Jews and Samaritans don't hang out together. But they are so lost, none of that stuff matters. They just, they're just so separated that they've got no one else to cling to but each other. And I want you to see how serious being lost is. If you've been a believer for quite a while, sometimes we forget how being separated from God and how, how thirsty our soul gets for finding refreshment in the Lord. These men were about as far away uh, from God as they could get, and they were just calling out, Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. Now, Jesus looks at them and realizes that their situation, obviously, and he sees that they're, they're separated. And so he says to them, look what he says. Verse, uh, in verse 12, they have this prayer request. Uh, As they entered the village, he met the ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Their prayer request is, Lord, we've got a physical need. We, we've got a need and a problem. And Jesus is going to tell them, and he's going to respond to them. Look at what he says to them. Verse 14, and when he saw them, and he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were what? As they're on the way to the priest, they're cleansed. In other words, they have a prayer request. God, we need you to heal us. And God says to them, okay, you want to be healed? Here's what you do. Go show yourself to the priest like the law subscribes. In, in, in the Old Testament, it says if you go to the priest and you've got a, a leprosy spot on your skin, uh, then you show it to him and he's supposed to do these tests and he can pronounce you clean. So that's what they're on the way to do. And on the way, it says they're cleansed. What they did was they made a request to the Lord, but then they responded by faith because they followed what the Lord said, even though they didn't feel like it. You know, they could have argued with him and said, now, wait a minute, with the blind guy last week, you just told him and he could see right then. Or with the guy that was demonized, you just cast the demon out right then. Why do we have to go show ourselves to the priests? That's a pretty good walk. Nobody argues, they just respond in faith. Friends, can I tell you something? When you pray to the Lord and you ask the Lord, you better be ready for the answer that he gives you and you better respond in faith if you want the result. So what God is going to do is he's going to do a physical work of healing in their lives. And he still does that today. He still heals those who call upon him. He still ministers to them. But I want you to think about something. If, if we're calling to the Lord... If in our prayer time we're asking the Lord, think about the physical, think about the blessings that you have today that, that we might take for granted. Think about your physical life. Did you deserve to be born in the United States of America? I mean, couldn't you have been just as likely born in North Korea? Why did God choose to have you born here? Why did you win the lottery? Why do you live in the only country where poor people are fat? I say that as a fat person. And maybe a poor person, I don't know. What I'm saying is, when I go, when Jerry and I go next week, when we're, we're down there seeing folks in Brazil who are poor, they're, they're skinny. You know why? They don't have enough to eat. But we live in this, why has God blessed you like that? Just the physical blessings that God has given you. 
Consider this day a gift. Why is it that you were able to wake up this morning, look out and see the sun shining, uh, and, and get up and come to church? Did you dress yourself? Did you drive yourself or have somebody drive you here? Think of the opportunities that you have. Think about that. And do you deserve any of those? Did you get all of these opportunities, these blessings, because you deserved them or did God bless you with them? Did you have the great parents that you had because you deserved them or because God gifted you to them? Do you see how we have all these blessings and sometimes we take for granted all the blessings and we forget? We forget and, and our attitude is not as grateful or thankful. Did you know that people that have a positive, thankful attitude live longer than those who don't? All those, all those negative 50 percenters say, all those negative 50 percenters are probably saying, hmm, that's just figures. Another thing I didn't get to lost out on, right? I had one guy say that, well, it isn't just that positive people you know, live longer. It's just that it seems longer because they're so annoying. But your attitude, your attitude determines your altitude. Your attitude, in a plane, the attitude, the position of the note, if this way is up and this way is down. Now, I say that as a glass half empty. I can be the guy that says, well, look what we don't have, or look what's missing, right? Uh, I can be that person and, and do that over uh, and over. But, but here we see these guys who say, hey, Jesus, we need to be healed. He calls us. We go, and it says that they're healed, and physical healing attends them uh, I just think it's amazing that God touched them and healed them. And then something special happens, though, because look, continue looking there in the Scripture. Look what it says, verse 15. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet, and he thanked him, and he was what? What? Yeah, one of those dirty Samaritans. And Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now, the Lord says that we should give, uh, what I read earlier, he says, give thanks in all things. All circumstances we give thanks. Not for, but in, right? Right? So here's a man who is responding to the will of the Lord, just like the other nine, he is going, and then he gets overwhelmed, and he can't wait to go back and thank the Lord. And Jesus notes that. And, and he realizes, look what God's done in my life. Now, here's the thing. We, the, the Scripture tells us to be thankful because we don't understand when God is moving in the background and we don't see it. When we're unhappy with our circumstances, it doesn't mean that God's not working. That's why we give thanks, not for the circumstances that he's present with us and is getting us through the circumstances. There's a, a story that's told, it's probably, I bet it's over 2,000 years old. And, and it's about a, a, a farmer whose horse ran away. His neighbor commensurated with him and is lost, but the farmer replied, well, who knows if it's good or bad? This proved true when the horse returned the next day, bringing with him a group of wild horses he had made friends with. Well, the neighbor comes back and corrects him. He says, wow, this is great. Look at you. You can sell these horses. This is going to be wonderful. The farmer says, well, who knows if it's good or bad? His son, trying to break one of those horses so they could sell it, was bucked off and broke his leg. The neighbor comes back over and says, man, I'm so sorry about that. That's tough for your son. The farmer says to him, well, who knows if this is good or bad? Hmm. A fourth time, this farmer's wisdom prevails because the following day, soldiers come by conscripting young men for the army, but the son was exempt because of his broken leg. Because who knows if it's... God does, right? God knows if it's good or bad, and we can give him thank that he's working all things out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So uh, this... This guy who's healed, he comes back and he says, thank you, Jesus. He falls at his feet and, and Jesus tells him, well, you're special. But look what he says in verse 19. 
He's gonna talk about total healing. He says, then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you, what? Well, rise and go. Your faith is made. Now, why does he tell him rise? Because he's on his face before the Lord Jesus. He is so grateful. He is overwhelmed. God, look what you have saved me. Look what you have rescued me from. And Jesus wants to know, well, where's, where's the other nine? Don't they understand? They were all healed. Don't they understand what happened? I, I'm sure this guy's, the tenth guy's thinking, I'm not the spokesman for them. I'm Samaritan. But Jesus tells them, where's the other? And, and he says, Go your rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now, this well, this word here is interesting because in the Greek it can mean to be rescued, to be healed, or saved, and it speaks to the totality of salvation. In other words, rise and go, your faith has made you or has healed you from top to bottom, inside and out, not just the outside. In other words, those other nine, they were healed of their leprosy, but you have been healed of what really is the sin-sick soul. Your soul has been made whole. We would call him saved. Only one is saved is the one who goes back and falls on his face and is thankful for what God has done in his life. Friends, when when you realize how much God has done in your life, when we look at the, the blessings and not just the lackings or not just the problems, It's then that our attitude changes and we become children of God and and we can be grateful to God because praise God that he saved you, amen? Amen. Praise God that your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I want to ask you to do something as you go home at lunch today. Consider, Consider if you spent eternity separated from God in hell. Consider what it would be like if Jesus hadn't died on the cross for you. But he did. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, um, He who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Isn't that great? He who knew no sin took our sin upon him so we could become the righteousness of God. In other words, he took our punishment, our separation. So really, physical blessings are great things to say thank you for, and we need to, because you got to eat. Amen? Well, I thought I'd get more amens in a Baptist church than that. You got to eat. Amen? Amen? There we go. I mean, Thanksgiving's coming. Don't tell me, oh, we're not going to eat this year. Just a little tofu and I'm good. Yeah. Ugh. No, physical blessings are great, but can I tell you something? Spiritual blessings are better. This man gets, uh, he, Jesus says, hey, what happened on the outside is good, but look what, because of your dependence on me, because you're confessing me, because you're worshiping me, because you've come back to the blessing, because you love me more than, you, you love my face more than my hand. You love me more than what I can give you. Now we have a relationship, and now you're saved. And he goes on his way, changed in a way that the other nine were not. So at Thanksgiving, I want you to be thankful for all the physical blessings and all the, all the blessings that you have. But I, I hope that you will also take time and go around the table and ask for not just a, one physical blessing, but one spiritual blessing. Celebrate the fact that your heavenly Father has given you spiritual gifts, that he has gifted brothers and sisters to minister one to another, that, that, that you are not alone, that his presence is with you that the Holy Spirit lives in you if you're his. What I'm most thankful for this year, what I'm most thankful for is that Jesus knows my name, that he's written it down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that, that someday I'll stand before him. And when I get to heaven, I won't be surprised by what he, what, who he is or what he looks like. He'll know me, and then I'll get to know him. That's the best blessing there is. That's the best Thanksgiving ever. We need to be thankful. You know, Thanksgiving in our country started about, uh, in 1783, I believe it was, Washington declared the first Thanksgiving. He declared a national day of Thanksgiving. But as a national holiday, one that was done the the, uh, third Thursday of the month uh, of November, was started by Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln did that in 1863. Now, what is interesting is 1863 is not a great year you would think for blessings. 
You had men dying by the thousands in battles. I mean 10,000, 20,000, just, just wiped out. The, the, the country was the worst war we've ever fought in any war. More deaths in that war than all the others combined. Why? Because it was a civil war of the, the American against American. North against South. Brother against brother. And they were dying by the scores. And in the midst of that, Lincoln declared a national day of thanksgiving, asking people to thank God for the blessings that he had bestowed on us individually and as a country. Remember, the Bible says to give thanks in all circumstances, right? All circumstances. I think, you know, if they could stop and thank the Lord in the midst of that terrible war, then how much more, Lord, can I stop this Thursday and thank you for all the blessings you give, physical, but especially spiritual. What a blessing that we have, that God loves us and that we can share his love with others, that we don't have to be fearful or scared, that we can splash that love over to other people. You are blessed, amen? You are blessed. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word that encourages us to be thankful. I thank you for those nine that were healed, but I especially thank you for the one who came back. Lord, help us to be that one who comes back and, and even more than just physical blessings, Lord, they hunger for something deeper. They hunger just to worship you and to be right with you. Thank you, Lord, not just for what your hand gives us, but Lord, thank you for, for being in the presence of your face, Lord, seeing your glory and being able to worship you gives us. Lord, I, I ask your blessing. Lord, I ask your blessing on these. There are certainly some here, Lord, who are, this is a tough Thanksgiving. This may be the first Thanksgiving without a loved one. This may be a Thanksgiving where, they, where, where others can't be at the table. And their hearts may be heavy from that, but Lord, I, I pray you would lift those hearts and remind them, not just of those physical blessings, of the presence of someone, but the spiritual blessing of knowing you and the presence that is always with them. Lord, bless these, your children. Bless us, oh God. Give us a, a spirit of thankfulness that we can be grateful and say thank you. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you've given to us individually, as families, as a church family, even as a nation. Thank you, O oh God, for all those blessings. For I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to have a hymn of invitation. If you'd like to uh, become part of a church family, this time is for you. Maybe you'd just like to have, uh, be prayed over, then this time is for you. Whatever you're doing, uh, these next few minutes, these are for the Lord. You do business with God. Uh, you, you sing and you pray uh, as, as we ask the Lord to move. Sorry about that, Lynn. Uh, the, my, so this is uh, Jerry uh, and Kimberly and Zoe. Jerry, Kimberly, and Zoe. Uh, and they come by statement uh, from a sister Baptist church, say, hey, this is where God wants us to serve. And they've been visiting. And so if you're excited about that, would you say amen? Amen. And we assign a, a deacon family, a deacon and his wife, to pray for you. Uh, and that is Scott and Terry Davenport. And that's your grocery guy. Yeah. That's the guy I see when I'm cooking that night. I go pick up barbecue. That's, that's crawfish pie. That's crawfish night. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Jerry's prayers were answered evidently with Scott being his deacon family. <laughs> So we want to have you come by and, and shake their head and, and uh, hug their neck and tell them we appreciate them coming to be part of our church family. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I'm going to ask Scott to close us in prayer. Now, before we do oh. that, Brother Don and yep. Jerry Bell are going to be leaving uh, oh, that's right. late this week to go on a mission trip to Brazil. I think we need to pray for you before we go through. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Anyone who wants to come and join lay hands on him. I'll, I'll just do it. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for Don and for Jerry and for their willingness to go on this trip. Lord, we thank you for the others who will be going to participate in the bucket ministry. Lord, we pray for protection as they go. 
Lord, we pray for health as they go. Lord, I pray even more for open hearts to accept you. And Lord, may you just bless this time as they go together. And Lord, that you would, uh, would bless that mission trip. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Father in heaven, we do thank you for this family who has come to join us. Lord, I, th- I pray that we would be able to minister to them. Lord, for Jerry and Kimberly and Zoe, we just, we just pray your blessings on them. And Lord, I pray that they find a place to serve you as we serve together, as we worship together. And Lord, I just lift them up to you. Lord, I, I just thank you that you've moved them to come this direction. Now, Lord, we pray that you would be with us as we go out into the community. May we be your presence everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen.